Oh my goodness, I am literally an Oompa Loompa. And this happens, you know, every once in a while, I get a little crazy with the self tan, like it is so bad. I don't know if you could tell on camera, not only am I an Oompa Loompa, I like missed entire sections of my face. Oh my gosh, I'll show you guys what I used because this, this product has done me dirty in the past. Oh my gosh, Editor Clancy here. I just have to pause it so we can all marvel at how bad this is. Like, th I'm not exaggerating, this is so bad. I still need to organize my drawers, you could tell. They are very much so, yeah, not good, but this is my self-tanning drawer slash sunscreen. I've been keeping some sunscreen in here. Where is it? Oh, okay, this stuff. This stuff will either be so good, so natural, or sometimes, I don't know, I just get a little crazy and the product gets crazy and it's just, it's not good. I feel like I'm like glowing orange right now and I just, I, I would rather, at this point, I would rather be pale than orange. Okay, I put on some makeup, definitely looking a little bit better. Makeup cures everything, but Neil came over, which I knew. We had some plans to hang out today. What I didn't know is that he brought over a present, aka a plant. You guys know I've said literally, probably since we first moved in, I really want to put like a plant in this corner. Or I guess originally I thought it was going to be that corner. Yeah. Well, yeah. That would be nice because that, I was going to say, I could have just got the cheapest planter then if you're no gonna... no no these couches like i uh, the problem is i was like zach please help me carry these couches he's like with your back yeah yeah yeah. i want to be able to see the i don't want it to be hidden under there Fuck i don't I, did, I couldn't picture your living room when i was no it will look so beautiful there. see the thing is neil got not only this plant neil's like the plant master he knows everything I but know. You also have an aesthetic eye. Where is it? Like, I think that this planter thing is so pretty. Thank you so much. I just don't want, I, I don't like weddings. So it's like, if it's someone that I'm like, you know, like other than you or like, uh, oh yeah. God, thank God I got on your list. <laughs> like if I don't have to go to a wedding, I won't go to a wedding. What was like your favorite part of our wedding? Don't make me do that. <laughs> <laughs> what was like your highlight of the night? So I've run into people like that all the time that are like two years older than me, but yet they were in a grade below me and I'm like, oh, what yeah. the f happened there? Well, like, his parents literally held him back because they didn't think he was ready for eighth grade. What does that mean? Eighth grade is so arbitrary, it means nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's not like high school. So they just made him do seventh grade again. His grades, he, he was not smart, but he, they weren't like failing. Remember you guys got like a fist fight on the bus? Yeah. It was so, I remember like getting off the bus and being like, uh oh. I, I distinctly remember this is so bad. I like don't relate to myself as like for who I was as a kid. Like I was a different human. Oh yeah. When you went to high school, right? Like, so I was in sixth grade. Finally, we weren't on the same bus anymore. I remember thinking, like, the, the world is my oyster. I can finally start, like, lying on the bus <laughs> and, like, telling stories. About, like, <laughs> telling, like, stories about my childhood that didn't happen. Like, I distinctly remember being, like, new world unlocked. Because if I tried to, like, like exaggerate, you'd always be on the bus. Like, that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I barely, I, I don't remember, like, ever taking the bus together, which is weird. Mm. I do. So you were there all the time that I got in trouble then. Remember when we had that lady that sat in the back? Yeah, but we sat so separately and I pretended like I didn't know you because you would always get in trouble. It would be <laughs> me and Emily in like our one little spot. I'm like, don't even make eye contact with him. I managed and then... to get in trouble every day before school, just on the bus. Remember the uh, the lady that sat back in the, the was there to make sure like we behaved or the whatever? Bus monitor, yeah. One time though, and I remember I was like, like a lot of, some of the time I probably deserved it, like whatever for like running around doing whatever. I didn't think she had a right to yell at me, to get me into trouble for cursing. Cause I was like, F you, you're not, you don't work for the school. But uh, one time though, she snapped. It was right after Ronald, Re snapped. right after Ronald Reagan died. Uh, we were stopped, we were in Franklin Square at a red light and there was people carrying, there was two people carrying this big like container and they were struggling. And I was like, I just said, I don't know, probably, I don't know who I said next to I go, oh, I bet Ron, I said, maybe Ronald Reagan's in there. <laughs> She, she was like behind me to the right. She was like, excuse me, you do not say that. She like grabbed me, she's like, you sit next to me now. And I remember telling her, you smell like <laughs> I'm not sitting next to you. She did smell bad, And she I really remember did. the up 
thing is when I told my dad that, like I told my dad about that, and like he always yelled at me for misbehaving. But I remember he had to hide him like laughing when I said that. That is like the best thing about like being a parent and whatnot. When you can occasionally tell like when your like parents think something's funny, that they should be like punishing you for it. It's like well. <laughs> Well, I was a good kid, so I never experienced that. Okay, so Neil and I are at lunch. I had my part set on getting a bowl with some sort of rice bowl, quinoa bowl, but one thing in life, my number one rule, is we have a turkey club is on the menu. You have to go for the turkey club. It might be a little known fact that many might not know about me, but yeah, turkey club is actually better than a chicken sandwich. What are you thinking for lunch? I don't know, probably a burger. But Turkey should... club, always the way to go. And you all got me three little pigs. No, I didn't. It's the buffalo chicken <laughs> I'm pizza. Kidding. There's a there's one on the menu that says three little pigs, and I wanted him to get it, but looks good. Morning, guys. I am 93 percent ready for the day. We'll call it. I've got my hair done, my makeup done, but you guys know the drill. I like to stay in my robe as long as I can. There's just something about it. Like I just feel so free i don't even know but oh my gosh i didn't show you guys the finished results of the plant guys this is like the nicest thing ever i was not expecting neil to get me a wedding present i told him like don't get me a wedding present we don't need anything like just don't do anything and he just came over with all of this stuff i am just so grateful like that was so kind of him it's called a money tree if you guys are interested i mean he did research like he knows all about different trees and plants and all of that this is the type of plant if you want to call it that that does really well in indirect light which is perfect because i mean our living room is just bright all day long which is like my number one requirement for a house i mean it looks super dark right now because i'm facing this huge window but if i back up i can show you just how like bright our living room is but it doesn't get direct sunlight right there so this is perfect for our space i was actually so close to buying a fake one but i'm really happy we actually have a real plant in here i just need to try not to kill it and then the next debate you guys know we've had these couches just chilling i thought we were going to bring them upstairs i could put one in the office and it didn't fit so let me know if you have <laughs> any solutions like can my office just not have a couch in it like that feels crazy it's it's not even like a big couch it's just like a normal size couch so i guess for now we're just gonna move these downstairs maybe so that they're at least out of the way because when people come over they're probably like what the heck like what like these people love couches today is another beautiful day we have just had the most beautiful weather over these past couple of weeks which i'm not gonna lie and i'm gonna hate myself for saying this at a later point when we have awful weather I'm craving a rainy day. Like I'm craving just like a, a soaker where you're just, you're chilling, you're inside. Like, I don't know, I'm kind of craving it. So whatever, I mean, I'm obviously happy it's sunny and I've been getting outside a lot. I just, I like the seasons. I like changing weather, AKA I like an excuse to be lazy all day because like if, if the sun is shining, I'm going outside, I'm going on a walk. Like I'm going to take advantage of it. It's just day 12 of this and I, I don't feel like going on a walk or going outside, quite frankly. It's a few hours later. I've been locked in this room and I just did something semi-impulsive, AKA I applied for a job and I have not applied for a job since leaving TV news, which I've talked about it on here before. I've always been open. Like I'm open to the idea that there might be a job out there I would want to do. And I wanna give a little disclaimer. I recognize I'm in a very fortunate position where no, I'm not in the job hunt. Like I'm not actively looking. I've always just said, if I stumble across something that looks good, that looks like, hey, I think I'd be a good fit and I think it'd be interesting. And I don't wanna use the word fun. Like I know work isn't necessarily fun, but like to a degree, yes, it can be. Especially as a reporter, I learned that I had so many fun days. I had so many not fun days as well. That's what makes it work, you know? You, you give and you get, it's, it's a give and take. But I have been open just to the idea of if I see something I like, I'm not afraid to apply. And then I was kind of just chilling and all of a sudden I got a notification on my phone and I guess, I don't even think I've ever gotten a notification like this before, but I guess I have like notifications set up from LinkedIn where basically they just sent me an email being like, new job posting we think you might like. I really don't remember ever getting any other emails like that before. Clicked it and it actually really sounded like something I would like, like kind of like a dream job, not, I don't know. Dream job is a very big word. I feel like that's a lot to live up to, but it just sounded like something I think I'd be good at and I think would actually be very enjoyable. 
And the next thing I knew, I was locking myself in my office and I created a resume because I didn't have a resume before this. I, I guess I had one from when I was a TV reporter, but pro tip, I mean, you kind of have to craft your resume for what job you're applying to. Obviously you'll have the basics down, but then you kind of go in with like, oh, you look at the job posting and you kind of just, you know, zhuzh it up a bit for that job, which this took me two hours to create because I had to go through like, you know, I, I not only was including like my reporting job, my other reporting job and then YouTube, but then you go in with the bullet points. Like this is what I was doing. And that's what was taking me so long just because I don't know, like just crafting the perfect sentences and I did it on Canva. And then as for the job, I'm not gonna say what it is right now. I don't know, it just feels so personal and the odds of me getting it, I'm scared to click to see how many people have already applied because by the time I hit apply, it was a lot. I think on LinkedIn it actually says, okay, as of right now, there are 95 applicants, which is not ideal. And that's just on LinkedIn alone. Like I'm sure on like Indeed and Glassdoor, there are others. So yeah, it seems to be a popular job listing, but I don't know, it's weird. Like a part of me honestly almost hopes to not get it because I'm like, oh my gosh, am I ready for this? Like this is a full-time commitment. Am I ready to have two full-time jobs again, you know, with YouTube and another job. I remember those days and how crazy it was. But then the other part of me is like scared, like, oh my gosh, like I really want this job. Like what if I don't get it? And this job, it's full, okay, this is why it's so ideal. It's fully remote, but then you go out and about for various things. So I'm not technically fully remote. I'm just not reporting to an office. It's almost like for TV news. I always thought that was the best of both worlds when COVID hit and my home base was my apartment, but then I went out for shoots and whatnot. Like I loved not having to go into the newsroom every single day. It saved me so much time in the morning, first of all, because in a pre-COVID world, I would wake up and have to be at the newsroom by 3.30 and then I'd be live, could be like an hour away, however far away by 5 a.m when I was using my apartment as a home base and like I had my work laptop and everything, I didn't have to leave my apartment until I was going straight to that shoot. Like it just made my morning so much more complicated having to go to like the newsroom for really no apparent reason and then a shoot. So anyway, this is crazy. I can't believe I applied. We'll see what happened. This is the first job I applied to. The odds of me actually getting it are, I feel like not very high, but it excites me that I at least found something. I'm just staring at this listing thinking this looks so ideal, but it just excites me that I found something that I think I might really enjoy because I have kept my eyes peeled over this last year. Like if anything pops up, I'll certainly apply and literally nothing has, but this looks good. I don't know. Okay, we're moving down to the kitchen so I can make my lunch because I'm starving. But one thing I forgot that I hate about applying to normal jobs, AKA non-TV news reporter jobs, is it's so hard to show an employee your worth on just like a sheet of paper, AKA a resume. Because what I loved so much about becoming a reporter and that whole interview process was I felt like it was just easier to show who I was on a video, AKA my reel. As a reporter, that's basically your resume, your cover letter, like everything all tied into one. Like obviously I still wrote a cover letter and I did all of that, but as a hiring manager, it's the real. You wanna see like, can the reporter talk? Can the reporter put together a story? What's their on-camera presence like? Like I just felt like it was so easy to just like here, this is who I am. If you don't like me, that's fine, but at least like you got an accurate representation. Applying to the job I did this morning though is reminding me of what it was like when I was applying to internships and I was just, I wasn't hearing back from anyone. Like it was really difficult for me to lock down internships in college, like it really was. And I just always thought like, oh, on this resume, like you just, you can't, I don't know, like you can't see who I am. I don't know, that's just random, but the lunch I'm making right now, by the way, I can show you when I am done. It's like my tried and true. It's one of my all time favorite lunches. I take two pieces of Ezekiel bread, which if you've never tried Ezekiel bread, I can actually show you. It can be found in the freezer aisle at your grocery store. It's so, I don't wanna say natural, but like it's so preservative free that it actually needs to be frozen. The thing with bread and all processed stuff, like the reason it stays so good, like for so many days is because of all of the preservatives. Like anyway, it's just, it's this whole thing. But this stuff is probably one of the healthiest bread brands you can find. My dad eats it too. He even says when you eat this bread, you don't feel as like 
heavy or tired after it just you, you feel better that's why i'm going on about the preservatives and all of the bad stuff but anyway i toast two pieces of ezekiel bread then i put on anywhere from like half an avocado a quarter of an avocado it really just depends on the avocado size then i put on some grilled chicken it's kind of like an open face sandwich but with ezekiel bread i don't know it's smaller so i don't really like making sandwiches out of it i like just eating it like this so look at that and then i've got a whole bunch of broccoli on the side, super filling. That's one of my favorite parts about this lunch. It's filling, but not in the way where you eat it and then you're like just dead and you just wanna like sleep. Like it's filling in a good way. Guys, I am so excited. I just received this random package in the mail from Lulu's. I have no idea what is inside. Oh my gosh, what is this? Um, yeah, just randomly came in the mail. So I figured we could do a little try on haul, which I feel like is 10 times more exciting because we are both trying it on together at the same time slash I don't even know what these pieces are, but let's do it. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? I am obsessed. Like the overall fit of this dress. So I feel like you could either dress this up or down. I'm just in like a dressy mood. So I decided to put some heels on. I'm obsessed with the fit. Like I feel like dresses like this a lot of times, not a lot, but sometimes they can just go south where it's either too poofy or it's just like, ugh, like, I don't know, like it's not poofy enough. It's the perfect amount of poofy. I love it. It's so comfy. This is a size small. It's like a navy color. I'm curious. I bet they have other colors too. I'm going to hunt down these pieces, by the way, and link them below if any of you guys are interested I'm wanting to spruce up your wardrobe. I am like, I'm obsessed. I don't want to take this off. Okay, this one is such a vibe. I would definitely wear it with heels. I feel like this is such a perfect like summer night, date night slash going into fall. I actually think this would be so cute. And if it's a little chilly outside, you kind of just put like a cardigan over it, maybe a leather or a jean jacket. But the really cool thing about this one is the material. Like this is maybe the most comfy dress I have ever put on my body ever. And then it has like this little um, cinchy thing at the waist, which I like, and I can even make it a little tighter just to cinch it in more, but cute. Okay. If you are on the hunt for a romper, this is giving. First of all, it doesn't look like a diaper. And second of all, it actually fits. I feel like finding fitted rompers that actually look cute is really hard. And I love this. And one thing I feel like my hair is blocking. It has very similar straps as the first dress and they're super like comfy, like very elasticy. Like I, you guys know me, I hate wearing outfits that are not comfy. Okay, I have never owned anything from Lulu's that isn't like a dress or something dressy. I think I own a few like cute tops from there. What? I love their like loungewear, I guess you'd call it. And this is my vibe for when I'm just like running to Target, running errands. The material is also so good. Like I'm a very big material person. And honestly, I'd even work out in this top. And I love the length. Like it's slightly cropped, but nothing crazy. Oh my gosh, this hat is the answer to all of my prayers. I have been trying to find a hat that goes over the ears nicely where I have other hats that just don't fit right over my ear, like my hair, creates like a crease thing. This is perfect. And I like how it's just like solid. Like it's not, there's not a crazy graphic on it. It just fits with any outfit. And I saw they also sent over some kind of bag. Belt bags are seriously so convenient for when you're just like running errands and you don't want to carry an actual bag. I feel like most people wear them around their shoulder, but honestly, when I'm going on bike rides, that's when I especially need the belt bag. And it's just so much more convenient for me to like grab my phone there. I love this. And then the last thing, this is the definition of my vibe, is the comfiest sweater. What is this called? Like a crew neck. It says Beverly Hills Tennis Club. I'm obsessed with just the colors. Like what the heck? This looks so cute. And it is comfy. I cannot stand crunchy t-shirts, crunchy sweatshirts. If you know, you know, like the inside. I can't even describe it. So you could just see it's like that fuzzy material. This is just going to be such a classic for me to throw on when I'm running errands. I'm obsessed. Yay. I'm going to find them. I'm going to try to link them below for you guys. I'll put, I know I didn't say the sizes. I'll put the sizes in the description box because I know it's helpful to like have a base for how everything fits. Anyway, I'm keeping this sweatshirt on for the rest of the night.
up a little chocolate protein shake, which I am so happy because my chocolate protein powder came in the mail. I am just like a chocolate protein shake stand now. For a while, I have been mixing the vanilla protein with my own cocoa powder because I just hate chocolate protein powders. I've tried three or four that I just, uh, I did not like at all. This one is a winner though. So I just ordered two of them and I am very happy I discovered this. And then as for my plans for the day, I actually cannot take you guys along with me, which I always hate. Like I hate doing something, saying I'm doing it and then not showing you. Like at that point, it's like, all right, I shouldn't even say I'm doing it. Like, I just feel like that's a way to make a vlog really boring. But I still want to discuss my experience doing said activity, if that makes sense. So when I get back, we will discuss. Hello, it is quite a bit later. I just dropped off my little sister, which some of you were like, what, she has a sister? Others know what I'm talking about. I spoke about it in a vlog a couple of months ago that I decided to join the Big Brothers Big Sisters mentorship program. I first heard about it when I was a TV news reporter. Basically, I mean, I think they have chapters all across the country. You are assigned a little. And that person, I think it's like, maybe the ages range from like six to 18, where basically you kind of just become their big brother or big sister and you do random activities together, you get to know each other and you're basically just a positive impact in their life. It doesn't even have to be that serious though. You could just be someone to hang out with, someone to catch up with. From the second I heard about this program, I thought it was just so cool but I just didn't have enough time. Like there was just no way with my TV reporter schedule and then also obviously YouTube on the side, like there was just no way. I felt so guilty about it. Like really, really I did but I just knew I barely had time to even like think, let alone take on this big commitment because it is a big commitment. As of now, I'm meeting with my little once a week where we just kind of spend a couple of hours doing random things, which I'm kind of racking my brain over like activities for us to do together. Today, we just went for a walk. We sat on a bench at a park for like, I don't know, an hour and a half. And then we went to a food spot that she liked. So I'm just trying to think of like random activities. I know the library is a wonderful resource. That can be sometimes boring though. Like I'm a nerd and I enjoy that. Not everyone does, I know. But yeah, comment below if you have any ideas for just like fun activities. I didn't even say she is 15 years old, about to be 16. So I'm trying to like find good things for us to do. It's probably gonna be even harder when it gets cold outside because I feel like when in doubt, just go to a park. Like that's my motto during the summer months. But I was gonna go to the library today. I think I might go tomorrow because I have to get home to shoot some content for a brand. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. I think it's a really cool program and I'm just, I'm so happy that I finally can do it. Like I finally have the time and the energy and just like the mental headspace for something like this. I'm back home, I just changed into some sweats because I have a rule that if I am at my house, I must be in the comfiest clothing possible. And by the way, I didn't even show this yesterday or like I showed it, but I didn't say it. I changed the placement of my mirror, which can I just say out of all of the purchases for our house, obviously, like I'm really happy. Okay, that I made the bed really poorly this morning. I'm not used to making it. Normally Zach does because he gets up after me. But fun fact, he had a doctor's appointment this morning. So he actually got up before me and... I um, I really did not do a good job making it. But anyway, out of all of the purchases, including my bed and couches and all of that, I literally think one of my favorite purchases is our mirrors. I got three of them, like these large oversized mirrors from West Elm. I can link them below if you're interested. I'm just obsessed with, first of all, like the way they aesthetically look, but also everything is so like, true to real life, which you guys know, I had that one faulty mirror but everything else, like you could tell these are high quality mirrors. And fun fact, mirrors are the one thing you should not skimp on because like the actual quality of the glass, like that makes such a difference in what you look like in the mirror. For example, I have one that I got so many years ago. It's, I think it's just like in the basement right now. It's so warped because it was so cheap. But yeah, I really like the mirror placement here. And then I still have to figure out what I'm doing with this section of our room, I'm just, I don't know. Like I'm almost thinking of doing a chair, like a really comfy, cozy chair with maybe like a little bookcase, kind of like a reading nook. I don't know, guys. 
I don't know. I'm very confused. So I will take any and all suggestions because it's a lot. And I still have to like figure out what I'm doing for our bed. Like I want to get more pillows. I still have to get our lamps, obviously artwork up here. It's all taking me a long time which is understandable and people are like oh my gosh like you know take your time with everything and i certainly am but i'm reaching a point where i'm like i i i'm just like pausing all efforts to get this house looking good like i'm doing nothing because i'm just so overwhelmed with how much we still have to do that i'm just literally doing nothing and that's obviously not good i'm also bummed because you guys know i think i vlogged about it like one or two vlogs ago i put this contact paper over my desk because it has been beat up quite a bit and this was like a good solution for not just going out and buying a whole new desk because as a whole this desk is still great but i ran out of contact paper ordered new contact paper on amazon and it came with all of these like indents in it which stinks like normally it wouldn't matter but for these purposes like it has to be flat otherwise it'll look so stupid as for a little update on the job situation it's been crickets i have not heard anything back and I just see the number of applications go up and up and up. I need to stop checking because that's uh, probably not healthy. But I'm not going to lie. A part of, uh, like, I, I want this job, like, right? Like, I would not have applied unless I really wanted it. A part of me almost feels relieved. I don't know. I'm at this weird place in my life where sometimes going back into corporate America sounds... Fun isn't the right word, but it sounds like riveting, like a new challenge, interesting, intriguing, I don't know, all of the above. And then on the other hand, I have a day like today where I was out with my little all throughout the day, and that's something I know I won't be able to do if I go back to corporate America, so, you know. There are pros and cons, I've always said it. I've always said that there are literally pros and cons to everything. The key to life is recognizing the pros in whatever situation you're in. Anyway, now I'm preaching. Oh my gosh, I need to like step off my little soapbox, but I'm gonna go put dinner in the oven. Pretty much just have a chill night. I really, really have been enjoying just like my chill evenings, curling up with a good book. Currently, I just started reading Born a Crime by, what's his name, Trevor Noah. And so far it's really good, but I'm literally on page like 30, so I really have not read anything. But if you guys are interested in my book reviews, by the way, I do not use Goodreads, I always get questions about that. I don't use it. I just, I don't know. I've just never been a Goodreads person. I put all of my book reviews on my Instagram stories. There's like a little highlight section for each year of reading. So if you guys are ever in the search for like a new book, a good book, whatever, definitely check that out. I mostly read nonfiction, like literally any type of autobiographies slash biographies and thrillers. But anyway, I'm gonna go. I love you guys so much. Bye.